We decided to take on all three of these challenges. It's overwhelming, it's messy, and it's unreliable. And create a tool that detects breaking news in a way that was a little less overwhelming, a little more organized, and more reliable. And we thought AI could help address most of the problems we talked about, but we wanted to be careful on how we employ the machine learned models. Keeping the use of complex mod models to a minimum in favor of smaller, faster, and more transparent system allowed us to employ creative feature engineering and system design. So first we had to address the, the sheer volume. At best, we're at 4 million tweets. In reality, it's more than that. Uh, we'll say 4 million for the sake of argument here. Um, on the surface, it appeared we were tackling a very hard problem, identifying newsworthy tweets. Um, even the concept of newsworthy is a little bit ambiguous, um, especially for our Reuters journalists. For example, uh, a Reuters journalist doesn't care too much about celebrity gossip, but if there's a celebrity involved in a murder trial, that would be something they would definitely want to follow up on. And after some time, we found that identifying news-like content with a single classifier was too difficult. However, we thought we could solve the opposite problem, identifying what is not newsworthy. So we identified four main categories of non-newsworthy content. Now, maybe really three. Uh, the first one, we removed non-English tweets. Obviously, there's plenty of non-English tweets out there that have newsworthy content. That isn't the point. Uh, but we decided to focus on English because we would have good coverage it was a language we knew, and we had technology readily available that we knew worked well for English. Uh, next, we removed tweets including profanity and were highly opinionated. Our goal was to keep the feed as news-like as possible. And next, we removed spam and advertisements using a combination of a rules-based filter and a machine-learned algorithm to remove uh, legitimate messages that were classified as noise. Lastly, we used a topic modeler to identify day-to-day -day conversations or chit-chat uh, that really wasn't relevant to news. Now, to train the chit-chat filter, we required a large corpus of tweets that represented chit-chat, and we didn't have that. Uh, but what we were able to use was uh, about 20,000 messages from an online chat platform. So at the end of the day, after filtering out what we thought was non-newsworthy, we removed about 3 million tweets, and that left us with about a million tweets left over. Still too much, uh, but it gets us partly there. The next thing we did helped us manage uh, that volume even more. We took those tweets and we organized them into clusters or groups. Each cluster represents a single event, and we found that organizing the tweets into groups allowed the journalist to focus on the event uh, as opposed to individual tweets. And based on our interview with journalists, they thought that a story could be considered potentially important as soon as three tweets were posted about a story. So as a result, our clustering algorithm would group tweets in sizes of three or larger. We define each event around four semantic dimensions, the who, the what, the where, and the when. And we keep a live pool of clusters that can grow in real time. For any incoming tweet, we identify the four semantic dimensions in that tweet, if present. And then we look to see if that tweet matches up sufficiently with another tweet along the same dimensions. If it does, the tweet gets merged with that cluster. Now, when the cluster size reaches three, it's considered a unit cluster. And is considered potentially newsworthy. And that would be the first time a journalist might see that event on their screen. Unit clusters may merge together to form larger clusters. That's kind of this last bubble here. And again, we use the same semantic dimensions to uh, determine if they're uh, sufficiently similar to merge. And then tweets that don't merge into clusters or clusters that stop growing are discarded over time. We use a variety of algorithms to enrich the cluster with various metadata, such as topic tags and a newsworthiness score. And each 
uh, each of these scores is recalculated every time we merge clusters together.